Chapter 1266, Culling Out Future Troubles Facing unknown enemies would make anyone be on guard. The black-masked big man shot a fierce look and raised the tip of his saber slightly. Then, he asked again in a fierce tone, one last time, who are you and what have you secretly been researching in this desert? Tang Xiao didn't bother to waste time talking. He calmly glanced at Zhu Long before vanishing. The moment after, heads flew and blood pillars streaked into the air. In nearly the blink of an eye, tens of pyramid experts who chased down the fleeing Zhu Long's team had been completely massacred by Tang Xiao. This Zhu Long and the two Special Abilities Bureau's experts stared dumbly and tongue-tied at the scene in front of them. They were unfazed by the bloody scene but the thing that made them unable to believe their eyes was Tang Xiao's unfathomable might. It only took him a flash to kill all the tens of experts. How did he become so terrifying? Am I dreaming? One of the Special Ability Bureau's experts mumbled to himself. But he immediately found that Zhu Long and his other companion were also looking at him with complicated eyes. Inside the underground base, Duan Mu Lin stood still with hands crossed behind his back inside the surveillance room in the base. The huge monitoring room was as big as a basketball court, and the big screen in front of him showed the situation in the desert above. All of them were killed so easily. Duan Mu Lin's current strength was not as before. He was able to judge the strength of the tens of pyramid experts that chased Zhu Long's team. He could tell that the mysterious hulking man who led them was very likely to be even stronger than him. And yet, they were so easily killed by Tang Xiao alone? The current Tang Xiao, what realm had he reached? Regret filled Duan Mu Lin's eyes. He knew that he had been a frog viewing the sky from the bottom of a well. Even if he knew how vast the outside stage was, he was still standing still, conceited and complacent with no desires to explore further. What he regretted the most was that he had also thrown away a huge chance that had been presented before his eyes due to his stubbornness, and the feeling of glory brought to him by this base, all of which made his attitude towards Tang Xiao change. It was due to his changed attitude. It was only when he stated such improper remarks that he finally realized that he had made the wrong choice. Immortal World Immortals and the Myriad of Races Recalling how wonderful that incomparable world was, regrets filled Duan Mu Lin's whole being. Countless impulses drove him mad and made him want to chase Teng Xiao and apologize to him, yet he halted every time in the last moment, thinking that he must reserve the dignity he still had left. I can still do well without relying on him in the future, can't I? Duan Mu Lin fell into silence for a long while before he finally let out a deep sigh, closing his eyes and suppressing his regrets and unwillingness. Amid the dreadful heat waves that made the desert like a steamer, Tang Xiao easily traversed it and the expression on his handsome face was very calm. Prior to this, he taught a set of cultivation techniques to Duan Mu Lin in the hope that he would pledge loyalty and work for him in the future. However, it was obvious that the increase in strength and the long years on the top position had swayed this man's heart. Tang Xiao himself had encountered such people countless times. Back when he was in the immortal world and had countless men under him, such a case happened frequently. Some of them were subordinates he rescued from their enemies. But after they faced great opportunities and their strength skyrocketed, their attitude towards him then changed. Even some of them went so far as to tear all decorum with him and turn their faces away. One's character was indeed the factor that would decide one's future. Although he felt slightly regretful, it only brought a minuscule regret to Tang Xiao. Even though he had already taught the man a cultivation technique, Regardless of whether this man would still remember his grace or no matter how far he could go in the future, that would be his own business and had nothing to do with him anymore. He even didn't bother about anything else. After he left, he would still hand over the intel network of the Great Tang Empire and its ordinary personnel to the Chinese authority and this man. It was his hope that China would become more and more powerful in the future in order to be able to lead mankind smoothly to set foot on the Milky Way and start the era of interstellar voyage, while at the same time having the ability to protect themselves. 
You seem to have some concerns in mind, master. Tang Along, who kept following at Tang Shou's side, wore a thoughtful look on his delicate face. I do have some concerns in mind, indeed. Tang Shou nodded. Is it about Duan Mu Lin? asked Tang Along. You got a good insight, boy. Tang Shou smiled. That makes me feel more optimistic about you. Tang Along said, I've read hundreds of books and gleaned much of their essence. No matter how stupid I am, I can still see how people behave and grasp the psychological aspect of people's conduct. In fact, I'm sure Duan Mu Lin is filled with regrets now. But you didn't give him another chance. Regardless of whether I choose to regress this time or not, he will still show his current attitude if he makes significant achievements in a certain aspect in the future, Tang Xiao calmly explained. One's character is something deeply ingrained in their bones. Such people are bound to have changes in attitude no matter whether they are mortals or immortals. But some may change for the better and improve, whereas some others will just get worse. Tang Along nodded in response and said, each and every person does have their own respective path in front of them. But they can only resort to schemes when the path they choose is heading to nowhere. Tang Xiao faintly smiled in response. He stretched his hand to grab. Ah! Lang's shoulder. His figure suddenly streaked up into the sky while rapping. Ah! Lang with his power. In just a short moment, both of them had already arrived at the road they took two days to traverse previously. It then took another ten minutes or so before they appeared in a city several hundreds of kilometers away. Swish, swish, swish. Sword beams flashed and a number of heads fell to the ground. In an ordinary courtyard in a remote residential area, tens of foreign practitioners were slain by Tang Xiao instantly. All of them were members of the Stygian Club. Tang Xiao easily detected them with his perception after he entered the city. Who are you? A furious roar came from the house as a red-robed old man dashed over with two young men in front of Tang Xiao and Ah! Lang. Ah! Lang, those two boys are quite formidable. Go deal with them as practice, Tang Xiao calmly said. Tang Along hesitated and then forced a smile. Master, I may have broken through to the nascent soul stage, but I only fought with fierce beasts in the pocket world at most. I've never tried fighting with other people. In case. Tang Xiao raised his hand to interrupt him and said indifferently, everyone has their first time in everything. Although they are not as good as you in terms of strength, they have a strong smell of blood and rich killing aura. They've obviously killed many people and have rich combat experience, so they're good enough to serve as a whetstone to sharpen yourself. Tang Along took a deep breath and a firmer expression flashed in his eyes. He dashed several steps forward to the three men, cupped his fists and said, I've fought countless times in my childhood, but I've never fought with any practitioners. The two of you, give me everything you got. Because it will be either you both or me to die in the next fight. The old man's pupils shrank. He just sensed a powerful presence that made his scalp tingle and a chill to run down his spine. He wished that he could run away instantly at the time, so he took his two disciples rushing outside when he smelled blood. However, the scene in front of him sent a shiver all over his body and made him shudder. There was neither a scream nor any type of resistance. The present scene obviously showed that his men were all killed in an instant giving them no time to fight back or cry out for help. Nascent Soul Stage This young man just set a cultivation level of Chinese cultivators. Many people in the Stygian Club may not know about this cultivation level term, but he was perfectly clear about its significance. If the disciple had reached the nascent soul stage, then what about his master? Wouldn't that make this seemingly young man the likes of those ancient monsters who had been living for centuries? Who the hell are you people? The old man asked in a deep voice. I don't think you're qualified to know who we are, Tang Xiao replied lightly. You just need to know that your death is due today. The old man coldly hummed but didn't go straight at Tang Xiao. 
The tragic death of tens of his men before his eyes reminded him of the creepy feeling he felt previously. After hesitating for a moment, and when he was about to bring his two disciples back to the house to escape through the rear window, he suddenly sensed a burst of fearsome force that directly restrained his body, giving him no chance to break free no matter how hard he struggled. Stay still. After conjuring the restraining technique that instantly restrained the old man, Tang Xiao retracted back his primal chaos energy. He then chuckled and said, What are you waiting for? Ah, uh. Lang. Just slay them directly if they want to escape. I'll let them go if they fight openly and you lose. One of the two similar-looking youths immediately asked the old man, Can we kill him, master? The old man blinked and bitterly said, Fight together to defeat him, but don't kill him. If you two can defeat him, I'll bestow you with two daggers, and I'll refine them myself. For real. Surprised, they looked happy and exclaimed. For real. The old man wanted to nod, but he couldn't even move his neck at this moment. In desperation, he could only look at Tang Xiao with pleading eyes, asking for mercy. A mocking look flashed in Tang Xiao's eyes as his palm slapped forward. The old man's head instantly flew up and he directly died as the blood sprayed from his neck. Master. Master. The faces of the two young men drastically changed and disbelief filled their eyes. In their eyes, their master was simply an invincible existence. He was even able to slay tens of terrifyingly powerful practitioners by himself in the past. He even took them to some mysterious places and killed some fearsome fierce beasts. And yet, such invincible existence was so easily killed by a wave of this young man's palm? How could this be possible? You too, listen to me, Tang Shou said. I just gave you the opportunity to keep your lives. I'll spare your lives if you can kill my disciple. If you can't, however, you will only go to hell to accompany your master. Chapter 1267, Between Life and Death The two youths exchanged glances. They didn't expect that the terrifying expert in front of them would make such a request. Could it be that he had a grudge towards his own disciple? Why did he force them to go all out to kill his disciple? Tang Along swiftly cast a technique and unleashed the immortal sword stored in his body towards the two young men instantly. He realized that his master's order meant that he must kill these two people, or he would be killed by them today. This order was both a way to hone himself as well as a trial for him. Kill the two young men no longer hesitated. The desire to survive became a trigger and drive to go berserk. They weren't saints. Their hands were stained by blood. Even their master ended up like a dead stray dog in the hands of this man. Hence, the only chance for the two of them to survive was to kill this young man, hoping that this youth's master would keep his word. Lightning Rune in nearly a flash, they took out two paper runes from their sleeves and activated it, hurling lightning bolts directly at Tang Along. Standing more than ten meters away, Tang Xiao's eyes instantly narrowed. He noticed that the lightning runes activated by these two youths were unexpectedly paper runes he refined himself, and were auctioned out at the Genesis Auction House three years ago. Interesting. A smile crept up on the corner of Tang Xiao's mouth as he observed the two youths who were full of desire to kill. Tang Along had never had a life and death fight with cultivators and was shocked when facing dozens of hurling lightning bolts that sealed off all the space around him. Even if he were to quickly retreat, his speed wouldn't be able to beat the speed of the lightning bolts. Decagon Killing Sword Tang Along steeled his heart and instantly manipulated his immortal sword and formed ten sword beam formation. His body shook violently when the lightning bolts bombarded the sword beam's array, causing him to take a few steps back before he was able to stabilize himself. Creak, creak. The two youth's figures began to change at the moment, revealing a pair of fangs and sharp nails. At the same time, a pair of wings instantly grew on their backs. The moment they flapped their wings, two streams of black energy turned into sharp arrows and hurled toward Tang Along lightning fast. They are vampires? 
Tang Along had never seen a real vampire before. He only heard that this race existed in some European countries. He even heard that some vampires had a deep friendship with his master. Psychic Wave Lacking combat experience, Tang Along used offensive moves like a defensive one to block the series of lightning bombardments and resisted the incoming dark energy arrow. At the same time, he also exhibited another type of strike that he was good at. Buzz The two vampires attacking Tang Along suddenly trembled and let out shrieking screams, causing their dark energy arrows to disperse. Meanwhile, Tang Along's figure lunged and streaked up into the air tens of meters high like a cannonball. He then unleashed the decagonal sword array move once again. This time, he used the move not to defend but to take the initiative to launch a strike. Slash, slash, slash. Bloodstains appeared on the two vampires' bodies. But both of them had rich combat experience and quickly brandished their staffs to form a huge shield with their dark energy, blocking the incoming sword beams. At the same time, they also continuously released dark energy arrows at Tang Along from both sides. The bizarre trajectory of the arrows caught Tang Along off guard, causing the dark arrows to explode as they hit his chest. Pua. Coughing up a mouthful of blood, the jade pendant on Tang Along's chest shattered and eventually turned into dust, dispersing in the wind. F asterisk CK. Off. The immortal sword flew back to Tang Along in a flash. The sword beams it created blitzed like lightning bolts, dispersing the dark energy arrows. However, the moment he was off guard yet again, two sharp feathers followed the next incoming countless dark energy arrows and straightly hit his left arm and right chest. I gotta calm down and keep my head cool. My combat experience is not as rich as theirs, but I'm faster and stronger than them. If I can observe their moves with a cool head, I can definitely find the flaws in their attacks and then launch a counterattack. Although he was injured, he forced himself to calm down. His eyes turned sharper. As his trembling body stabilized, he used his spiritual sense to launch another psychic wave attack, causing the two vampires to scream and flee. Flame Casting another technique, Tang Along conjured flames out of thin air and then turned it into a fire rain. The overwhelming attack blotted out the sky and oppressively crushed towards the two vampires. Wind a rolling twister appeared around the flame out of nowhere and formed a flaming twister as though a ring of fire halo around the sun, causing the speed of the flames to increase by several folds. Blade The moment his immortal sword hovered and surrounded Tang Along's body and destroyed the barrage of dark energy arrows coming at him, a sharp dagger suddenly appeared in his hand. It was a dagger, a self-protection-type dagger given by Master's Lady, Kong Xia, who personally picked it up in the Nine Dragons Islands treasure vault. I've never killed anyone, but I've slain hundreds of fierce beasts. Now that you've turned into beasts, then I'll reap your lives. He had the advantage in speed and quickly pursued along with the Reign of Fire Twister, appearing in front one of the vampires in a flash. As he launched a meteor-like punch into the Reign of Fire Twister, the violent punch was magnified dozens of times and bombarded the vampire. He quickly bolted forward with the dagger in hand and pierced one of the vampire's wings the moment the latter was forced to retreat. Burn A flame blob suddenly appeared on the vampire's wounded wing. In nearly a flash, the flame blazed and swept across the whole wing. Arg. The extreme pain caused the vampire to shriek and scream miserably but the response that greeted him next was meteoric sword beams that pierced his body. Brother The other vampire never dreamed that his big brother would be pierced by their opponent in such a fashion so quickly. Although he knew that the bloodkin had abnormally strong bodies and wouldn't die as long as their core nucleus wasn't destroyed, his brother's miserable state caused him to nearly lose his mind. Feather he flapped his wings and a band of feathers instantly shot forward. With the speed doubled and with the addition of the dark energy arrows, they appeared in front of Tang Along in the blink of an eye. Life and death had never been so close as in this moment. 
Tang Aolong could even sense the impending shadow of death looming over his head. Unfortunately for his opponent, he didn't panic because he knew that he would be closer to death if he lost his calm. While watching the incoming dark energy arrows and feathers resolutely, his fingers constantly moved as he cast a secret art. In the next moment, the fire twister all over the sky instantly condensed and formed a flaming sword covered by twister flame. It was a magical skill he created himself after enlightenment fighting the fierce beasts in the pocket world. The flame sword flashed and cut the vampire's body. The moment it slashed the vampire's body, the speed of the feathers that filled the sky sharply dropped by several folds. Block. The instant after, he instantly manipulated his true essence energy to form a transparent shield in front of him and then coughed a mouthful of blood. His body flew backward and fell to the ground. If it wasn't for his tough body after having undergone tempering, he would have turned into a meat pulp from the heavy fall. Humph. Tang Xiao, standing in the courtyard, saw the vampire with one wing destroyed not even care about his brother's death and flee when Tang Aolong fell. He immediately threw a dagger and directly crushed the core nucleus in his body. Afterward, Tang Xiao appeared in front of Tang Aolong and lifted him from the ground. While looking at Tang Aolong's scarred state with a disappointed expression, he shook his head and said, You would have died if that fleeing vampire chose to launch a powerful attack against you. You failed this trial. I want you to work more diligently later and not let me see another defeat. Cough, cough. Tang Aolong coughed up two mouthfuls of blood. He suppressed the violent and chaotic energy inside his body and replied with a depressed face, I'll keep it in mind, master. I'll definitely work harder to temper myself and increase my combat experience. Tang Xiao nodded in response and took out a holy healing pill. He stuffed it into Tang Along's mouth and said, You have half an hour to recuperate, then we'll continue our trip. I'll give you other chances to fight in the next two months, from which you must learn how to survive. As long as you survive, you'll be able to adapt to the bloody storm when we arrive in the immortal world in the future. A firm and resolute look filled Tang Along's eyes. He knew that his master was disappointed in him this time. Given his current cultivation level, he should have been able to kill the two vampires with ease. After half an hour, Tang Along jumped up from the ground and respectfully said, My injury has mostly healed, master. Tang Xiao nodded and ordered. You have another half hour to recall and reflect on the previous fight. I want you to give me at least three ways to easily kill the two vampires half an hour later. Tang Along then sat cross-legged on the ground. His expression turned thoughtful and his eyes kept flickering. He recollected the fight bit by bit and analyzed it again and again. Finally, the first method that could easily kill those two vampires took shape in his mind and a look of shame appeared on his delicate face. A few minutes later, he was able to deduce the second method. Fifteen minutes later, he deduced the third method, but he didn't stop his analysis and continued to deduce more. His analysis speed turned faster as time passed. In just half an hour, he had come up with eleven methods to easily kill the two vampires. An ashamed expression then covered his face as he lifted his head to look at Tang Xiao. Chapter 1268 Taking Another Chance Tang Along got up with glistening eyes. He looked at Tang Xiao's indifferent expression and then respectfully said, Master, I'd like to have another chance to fight. How many methods have you come up with from the last fight? Tang Xiao asked. Eleven. Tang Along replied respectfully. Tang Xiao's brows raised and he nodded with satisfaction. You finally didn't disappoint me. You want another chance, so I'm going to give it to you. Let's go. Where to? Tang Along asked. To the place I'm going to give you this chance. Tang Xiao smiled. Two days later, Tang Xiao took Tang Along to South Korea, the pair of master and disciple rushing towards their destination as two cars sped up to the airport. Has the investigation been carried out? Sitting in the car, Tang Xiao asked while gazing at the scenery passing by. 
The great Tang Empire's intel operatives gave a few documents to Tang Xiao and replied with a respectful expression. Your Majesty, Shiman Wan Dai clan has built a secret base in the southern part of South Korea, where he has been training assassins since. Each of these assassins is an elite among elites, and there's a total of 23 instructors as well as supervisors in charge of training them, all of whom are practitioners. Five of them are comparable to a Golden Core stage expert. Aside from the two experts of this clan who drift from place to place often, they can be regarded as the top experts in the country. This Shiman Wan Dai name doesn't seem to originate from South Korea, no? Tang Shou said. The intel operative shook his head and said, This clan is indeed not a native of South Korea. Their origins are Chinese. Like the Joyous Palace in Japan, they were unable to stay in China in the past and then migrated here. The centuries of development led to the separation of nationality from their origins, and eventually made them form an independent force that can sway this country. It can be said that the Shiman Wan Dai clan is the one that holds the true power in South Korea. Further, we found from our investigation that the ancestors of the Shiman Wan Dai clan should be from China's Sichuan province in the past. Also, their most known expertise is face shifting. Face shifting? Tang Xiao recalled a particular art spread out among the folks in China's Sichuan province. Then another thought flashed in his mind as he smilingly said, Ah, it seems that the plastic surgery service in South Korea didn't come out of nowhere. Face shifting, huh? That sounds interesting. The intel operative couldn't help but chuckle at his comment and immediately said with a smile, What you said does make sense, your majesty. This subordinate is really dull and was unable to make such a conjecture previously. The Southern Region The secret assassin base of the Shiman Wan Dai clan was located in a forested hill along the coast. The hilly area itself was not high, but the forest here was dense and covered a large area. When the car stopped at a fork in the road at the foot of a mountain, the agent got out of the car and opened the rear door for Tang Xiao. Then, he said respectfully, Your Majesty, given our investigations, this is the most suitable entry point to successfully enter the area, though we'd need to cross six lines of defense to get there. Would you like this subordinate to lead a team and clear all the enemies at those lines of defense? No need. Tang Xiao shook his hand and said, You're to wait for us here. Having said that, he grabbed Tang Along and quickly disappeared into the woods. The winding river had a clear and transparent freshwater, and a few colorful fishes swam freely in the creek water. Several snow-white hares could be seen running on the river bank scaring several birds away. Tang Along halted his pace when he spotted two military tents across the river and several big men in black uniforms around them. I won't move, everyone there will be your enemy. Tang Shou said, go. I want you to hone yourself in the fight and become stronger. Understood. Tang Along nodded in response and his eyes flickered. His figure turning into a flying arrow, he suddenly appeared outside the tent on the opposite side of the river with a sharp dagger in his hand. As a flickering blade light flashed, the throats of two big men in black uniforms were easily ripped open. Who are you? An angry roar came from the surroundings, shouting in Korean, which neither Tang Xiao nor Tang Along understood. Tang Alang didn't even bother to pay attention to the other party's shouts. His figure flickered once again and another black uniformed man fell to the ground. When several big men were killed, Tang Xiao appeared in front of Tang Alang and faintly said, You're a cultivator, not some assassin. Tang Alang stared blankly for a moment. He immediately understood Tang Xiao's meaning and nodded. I understand what you mean, master. I'll use Cultivator's custom to kill the enemies, then. That's not what I meant. Tang Shou shook his head and said, You have to use anything you're good at to kill your enemies, and you must keep your vigilance and stay on guard all the time. If the other party hides their strength and you only resort to using such sneak attacks with a dagger, you are be bound to suffer a great deal later. Tang Along thought for a moment and felt that Tang Shou's was right. 
he immediately unleashed his immortal sword and controlled it to hover around him before traversing deeper. At the second line of defense, Tang Along directly manipulated his immortal sword to kill several big men in black uniforms in a flash. At the third line of defense, at the sixth line of defense, after Tang Along shook the blood off the immortal sword and stored it in his body, Tang Xiao, who followed him, looked at the bodies on the ground and shook his head. They're all just some ants. They only practiced some kind of qigong art and are at most at the level of a martial arts grandmaster. However, they have a thick murderous aura. They've obviously killed many people. Tang Along took out the map given by the intel agent previously, carefully observed it for a while, then found the location of the secret base. He didn't talk much and flew directly there. Two minutes later, he appeared midair above the base. Tens of figures scrambled out lightning fast and a group of people surrounded him in a flash. At the same time, hundreds of assassins under training shouted and came one after another. They quickly joined them and created three layers of encirclement inside and outside the area. Who are you daring to break into my training base? An overwhelmingly loud voice came from the deepest part of the base. Immediately after, three figures flickered in a flash and instantly appeared in mid-air above Tang Along. They looked down at Tang Along with a threatening stance and boiling killing intent, though they didn't attack him immediately. Tang Along frowned. Although he had already been briefed on the road to this base, he didn't expect to see so many people here. To his surprise, many of them were cultivators, and some of the assassins under training even emitted true qi fluctuations, obviously indicating their recognizable strength even though they were only martial artists. Still, there should still be two powerful experts in this place according to the intel. Tang Along took a deep breath and said in a deep voice, Exterminating demons is a must to defend traditional values and to rectify and help justice to prevail. This one came here to challenge you. Which one of you dares to come up and fight with me? What? Everyone in the training camp wore bizarre expressions. They never thought that such a dumb kid would trespass the base and state something stupid like, exterminating evils and defending justice. He, he speaks Chinese, doesn't he? Suddenly, some sharp-minded people immediately caught the gist of the situation. Of the three men standing high in the air glaring fiercely, the curly-haired burly man in a black robe wore a contemptuous look and observed Tang Along from head to toe. He couldn't sense any force fluctuation from the kid at all, making him wonder and become suspicious. How can this kid come to this guarded area? How did he get through? Is he a blind cat that went through some dead rats to get here? Are you a Chinese, brat? The burly man squinted and asked in Mandarin with a grim face. I'm from China, indeed. Tang Along nodded. Did you get here by chance, or do you have some other purpose? The burly man asked again. Or, did you come here before and now want to make trouble? My master shut me out for having no actual combat experience, so he sent me here to challenge some halls. Your place is a training camp for assassins, so none of you are good people. I already stated previously that I'm going to exterminate evils and defend justice. I'll kill you all so you can be a good person in your next life. Wahaha. The instructors and hitmen who understood Mandarin all laughed and looked at Tang Along as though he was an idiot. The burly man standing in the air shook his head with a wry smile. Then, he waved his hand and shouted, Which one of you who wants to send him to Western Paradise? Let me do it. A man with a naked upper body wickedly grinned and instantly dashed towards Tang Along, slashing at Tang Along's neck with the dagger in his hand without pausing. Stab. A faint sound was heard. But it wasn't Tang Along's neck that was torn by the man. It was the sound of the immortal sword he unleashed directly impaling the man's body, crushing his heart and killing him in a single strike. The sudden change caused the smiles on everyone's faces to freeze and their eyes to bulge out as if they couldn't believe what they just witnessed. He died, just like that? A famous trainee was so easily killed by this kid? 
What the hell was that damn sword and how could it fly in the air? In midair, the three burly men exchanged dismayed glances, but their faces now looked solemn. The one in the middle shouted fiercely, Your sword is a magical weapon, isn't it, brat? I can sense a powerful aura coming from you. Are you a cultivator from China? That's right, said Tang Along calmly. The burly men said in a deep voice, We have neither feud nor grudge with any Chinese cultivators. Why did you break into our site and kill our people? Are you not afraid to cause a war between the two countries? Chapter 1269, A Bloody and Difficult Battle Tang Along was a bit nervous, but his tension vanished when he heard the burly man's statement. He let out a faint smile and said, You're nothing but a bunch of rats scheming and tricking in the dark. How could rats like you have the balls to fight a dragon? Do you think you can really set off the storm to a vast and big country such as China? He paused for a moment before seemingly recalling something else. Then, the smile on his face turned thicker as his body slightly floated upward and reached the same height as the three men. If the information I got is true, the master behind you, the Shiman Wandai clan was originally from China too, right? <laughs> they lost their foothold and could no longer stay in China in the past, so they acted like distressed rats and fled to this small country. Me killing you will serve as making a contribution to my fellow countrymen, no? The burly man's expression drastically changed and disbelief filled his eyes. It must be noted that this matter was absolutely confidential, not even ordinary clansmen of Shiman Wandai were aware of. Only a dozen or so core members of the clan knew about this secret. And yet, how come this kid knew about it? Who had betrayed the Shiman Wandai clan and exposed this secret? Kill him! The burly man took a deep breath and fiercely shouted. An endless stream of hidden weapons and bullets were shot at Tang Along, who stood tens of meters high in the air. Tang Along's position at this time made him a living target with no cover and obstruction. However, a surge of his true essence energy blasted out as water droplets appeared out of thin air and began to spread violently, eventually forming a wall of water in front of him. <laughs> Ants! Tang Along coldly hummed. He recalled the combat skill he had deduced previously. He recalled the scene of his fights against the fierce beasts in the pocket world and then waved his hands. Arrows made of water then formed in the wall of water and instantly blasted out down to the hundreds of people below. The scene resembled a blasting gale steamrolling a wheat field. Hundreds of assassins in training were pierced by arrows of water, reaping their lives. The tens of cultivator instructors didn't have a chance to rescue any of them and could only watch as the elites, they had trained from several years, were all killed, nearly driving all of them into madness. Kill him. With overwhelming ferociousness, the tens of instructors took out their weapons and stormed over Tang Along. When Tang Along came to this place, he began to analyze and deduce what kind of method he must use in the fight here and finally came up with how he should kill the enemies after the short conversation. Therefore, he was very calm at this moment as his pupils began to contract slightly, observing the moving trajectories of these practitioners, calculating their speed and the distance between them, as well as the spots they would appear next. Sword Art, Divide Waving his hand in a flash, Tang Al Aing manipulated the immortal sword and created dozens of sword beams that moved in bizarre trajectories in midair. In just a flash, the beams blasted through the chests of tens of people. The sword art, divide move was a fearsome move taught to him by his master's lady, Ouyang Lulu, whereas the mental calculation he just used to come up with such a battle plan was taught by another lady of his master, Gu Yen. It was his first time using these two newly learned techniques in actual combat. The result was much to his satisfaction because he found that the sword art, divide move was truly a killing technique, whereas the mental calculation could be used to clear his mind and fast thinking. How is this possible? Disbelief and incredulity were all over the faces of the three experts in the air. Never in their wildest dreams did they think that a 20-year-old youth could actually unleash such a fearsome killing technique. They never thought that so many experts would be killed in an instant like this. 
The grief and pain, the anger and fury were unbearable. Except for the middle-aged man who had yet to make any more, the other two instantly moved and dived down like goshawks. They couldn't wait longer, wishing to mutilate Tang Along's body and rip it to pieces. Tang Xiao was standing under a tree two kilometers away while watching the scene calmly. He naturally was very clear about the killing technique Tang Along just showcased. He knew that it was a sword technique Ouyang Lulu created that suited her taste after studying various sword controlling arts in the library pavilion. However, he didn't expect that she would actually teach it to Tang Along. Apparently, they were aware of my intention to train. Ah, uh, Lang. Nevertheless, it's a good thing since it makes. Ah, uh, Lang stronger and this brat can become my right-hand man. He'll be able to serve as the commander of the Great Tang Empire's conquest army. Tang Xiao's eyes then shifted to the jade pendant on Tang Along's waist. This protective talisman he gave him a few hours ago was able to withstand the full strength blows from experts at the nascent soul stage thrice. But there was a chance that Tang Alang may be severely injured or killed after getting hit after three uses. However, it was something that Tang Alang himself was unaware of. Boom. The attack of the two big men whose cultivation level was at the golden core stage was very fast and violent. Both men's movements were swift, as fast as a lightning bolt, as they brandished their swords to clash with Tang Along madly. If it wasn't for Tang Along's fast speed, it was very likely that he'd be struck and killed by them. However, despite being superior in speed, Tang Along still had to face the perilous dangers that could reap his life at any time. Eye for an eye and blood for blood. The burly man standing in the air finally moved. His figure turned into a streak of light and appeared in front of Tang Along in a flash. However, his killing blow was not from his right fist that punched Tang Along, but from the hair-thick shiny silver wire wrapped around his left wrist and a copper bell tied to the end of the silver wire. Bang! Tang Along quickly avoided the lightning-fast punch, but he didn't notice the tens of meters long silver wire with a copper bell at its end that hit his back. Pua! He coughed up a mouthful of blood and felt a searing pain on his back. Barely maintaining his shape, Tang Along quickly moved in an arc-shaped direction as if he was a falling leaf. However, still affected by the blow, his waist and arm were stabbed by the swords of the other two burly men. Blood flowed and dyed Tang Along's clothes red. Yet, the pain sobered him and he became much calmer instead. The calculation process in his mind was already running lightning fast and his mind was now able to think 100 times faster than a normal person's brain. Although the speed was unable to match the speed of artificial intelligence, it was still terrifying given the fact that he was a human. Highest level of enlightenment. At this moment, Tang Along seemed to have eyes on his back. The immortal sword that was previously in front of him flashed under his left arm and directly impaled the abdomen of a burly man. The sword didn't even stop after the penetration and flickered again to ward off the slash of the saber brandished by the other man. The instant after, the immortal sword streaked upwards and seemingly moved fast for 100 feet instantly. However, the scene turned out to be a mirage, while the real body of the sword cut off the right arm of that burly man without him being able to avoid it. Decagonal Sword Array Tang Along had only used the move once, but he was already very proficient in it. Layers of sword images overlapped and formed a formation of swords and completely covered the three golden core stage experts. You're damned. A cold voice suddenly came from 100 meters away. Two figures flickered and moved lightning fast and appeared in front of the decagonal sword array in a flash. Scarlet lights blasted out from a copper mirror and the decagonal sword formation was instantly destroyed, while another hand brandished a sledgehammer and bombarded the immortal sword. Pua! The sledgehammer was cut in half by the immortal sword, but Tang Along ended up spurting a mouthful of blood and flew upside down to the back, while his immortal word and flew back, causing a whistling sound, and eventually hovered around him. How long does your excellency want to hide in the dark? Are you really not afraid that we'll butcher this little kid? 
Of the two newly arrived people, the gray-haired man with a young-looking face coldly looked at the direction where Tang Xiao was standing. Whoosh! Tang Xiao instantly appeared nearby and smilingly said, Well, I was still worried that the opponent I chose for my disciple was too weak to even serve as a tempering. I never thought that two of you would appear. But nevertheless, you both have made my worry vanish. You both are not bad, though. Your strengths can rival experts at the nascent soul stage and you likely have some killing techniques as well. That's quite good. The gray-haired man instantly sent the three men away and then shot a frosty stare at Tang Xiao, saying, Who are you, mister? I don't think the Shiman Wan Dai clan has any feud with you. Why did you come here all of a sudden and even killed our people? You know, the weak like you can only serve as a stepping stone to the strong. Tang Xiao chuckled. But the real reason why I chose you is that you guys can serve as a tempering and sharpening tool for my disciple. However, the fact that you all wicked people are obvious. All of you reek of blood, so I won't have any guilt killing you all. To be honest, I'm rather happy instead, since killing wicked people definitely can save countless good people. Hmph. <laughs> Do you really think we're afraid of you? The gray-haired man furiously yelled. You will be. That's for sure. Tang Xiao laughed. But you can rest assured that I won't get involved in the fight between you guys and my disciple, though. No matter how hard you try to save yourselves, you're just gonna die unless you can kill my disciple. Humph. <laughs> how arrogant. The other man whose cultivation was also comparable to a nascent soul stage expert seemed to manifest his fury into a flame. His figure appeared in front of Tang Xiao in a flash and instantly brandished the saber sheathed on his back to cut Tang Xiao's head. Well, might as well lighten up my disciple's burden. Tang Xiao slightly smiled. His palm gently moved to the front and formed a wind blade that swept across the man's waist instantly. One strike. It was just a single blow, but the man was cut into two halves. Second brother. Master. The gray-haired man and three other men were all in disbelief. They instantly rushed in panic towards the man who had been cut in half, but quickly found that his internal organs had already fallen along with his blood. No need to care about him, I tell you. Tang Xiao indifferently said, if he was cut in half by ordinary weapons, you might still be able to save his life. But his life force is completely destroyed since I was the one who did it. It's impossible to revive him even if you're the reincarnation of a perfected golden immortal. Chapter 1270 The Mysterious Grim Reaper Fear was now apparent on the gray-haired man's face. He was well aware of the strength of his second brother. Yet, that young man killed him in just one blow. It was obvious that this fellow's strength was extremely terrifying and definitely someone he couldn't afford to contend with. Run Without any care about the body of his second brother, the man instantly cast a secret technique that caused his speed to multiply several times as he fled lightning fast. Tang Xiao chuckled coldly and cast a secret technique. The gray-haired man felt that his waist was bound with a stream of energy that pulled him backward. He couldn't break free no matter how hard he tried. Cage Containment Tang Xiao moved his fingers and instantly drew some array patterns. In a flash, an array had fully covered an area with a range of one kilometer that contained the gray-haired man and the three men within. Afterward, he smiled and said, you'll never be able to break this array. The only way for you to survive is to kill my disciple. But if you can't kill him, then it will be you who'll be killed, of course. Getting shot with the same old tricks one after another did give a very significant effect. The four men suppressed their fears after hearing Tang Xiao's statement and directly stormed over Tang Along to kill him. Their speed was very fast and the might they unleashed was very powerful. Coupled with their teamwork and the area of movements that was limited to a radius of 1,000 meters, Tang Along finally faced a thrilling and perilous fight that nearly killed him several times. At first, Tang Along could only keep avoiding desperately before he gradually adapted to the rhythm of the encirclement attacks. 
His mind was even able to calculate faster and faster and then he began to fight back. Although the might of his counterattacks was insignificant at the beginning, it continued to increase. In just 10 minutes, he fully adapted to the battle rhythm and began to suppress the four people without them being able to fight back. It should end soon, huh? After seeing up to this moment, Tang Xiao was already very satisfied. Die. The immortal sword controlled by Tang Along suddenly blasted out. It was like the sun had exploded in front of the four people. Immediately after, the four men's pupils shrunk and they could only watch as sword beams shot at their eyes. None of them were able to avoid the strikes no matter how desperately they tried. Puff. 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 For bodies fell along with their decapitated heads. After beheading these four people, Tang Along wiped off the blood stain on his face and released his true essence energy to shake off the blood that covered nearly all his clothes. Afterward, he cast a water-based immortal technique, washed his body directly, took out some clothes from his interspatial ring, and stuffed the older ones after he got changed hurriedly. Master Tang Along dashed to Tang Xiao's front and raised his hand to touch the striking wound on his left cheek. His smile at this time, however, was particularly bright. Your combat skills have improved rapidly. Your ability to adapt to the situation in battle is remarkable. Tang Xiao nodded with satisfaction. However, it's still far from enough, so I'll take you to other places in the next few days. You'll have to go through such fights again before you can carry out your next mission. Eh, you have some missions ready for me to carry out. Master? Tang Along curiously asked. You can expect that the duty I'm going to give will be a very heavy one. Tang Xiao nodded and said, This duty will put the life and death of tens of thousands of people on your shoulder. Therefore, the most important aspect you need to improve as of now is your combat experience and the taste of life and death atmosphere on the battlefield. Keep this in mind. Even though I count this as your task to carry out, this also serves as a golden opportunity for you. Grasp it well and make me satisfied with your performance since this will benefit you greatly. Understood. Tang Along nodded, and his expression turned extremely resolute. In the following days, Tang Xiao took Tang Along to various Asian countries. Through the Great Tang Empire's Intel Network, he found other five places occupied by evil cultivators. After the series of battles and much tempering and honing, Tang Along's fast transformation gave Tang Xiao quite a surprise. In these several days, the jade pendant he gave Tang Along had warded him from fatal injuries twice. It was still hanging on Tang Along's waist although there were a few more cracks on it. At the basin of a mountain valley, Tang Along was standing atop a mound of flesh and blood. Bodies were seen everywhere in the surroundings. He wiped the blood on his face and his eyes still contained a bit of killing intent. His head then titled up as he came to Tang Xiao and asked, Where shall we go next, master? It's enough. We should go back now. Tang Xiao shook his head. Tang Along spaced out for a moment before his tense expression relaxed. The murderous intent in his eyes gradually dissipated. After washing himself using a magic spell, he changed his clothes, took a holy healing pill, and then respectfully said, I think I've fully adapted to the atmosphere on the battlefield after fighting these tens of days. Aside from improving my combat experience, only now do I realize that I used to be like a guardian of a gold mountain, but I still couldn't get enough meals since I had no idea how to utilize that gold mountain to buy food. Well, you've stimulated your potential. I can say that your initial transformation has been completed in just several days. Tang Xiao lightly smiled in response and said, All things considered, you've done well, and this will be greatly beneficial for you in the future. However, don't become arrogant and complacent. You should now be well aware of the fact that you could have died several times already had it not been for the protective talisman I gave you. That's why you must keep in mind to never treat enemies lightly in the future, no matter who they are. Plan carefully and unleash everything you have to strike any enemies you face regardless of their strength and cultivation levels. 
I understand, Master. Tang Along respectfully nodded. During these ten days or so, all major forces throughout the Asian region had shrunk. The emergence of a mysterious assassin had become public knowledge. This person boasted a very powerful strength, so powerful that they were scared senseless. Further, the tragic and miserable situation of those who were hit was also passed to the leaders of all forces. After reading the information, all of them remained silent for a long time and chose to stay dormant. No one tried to investigate the identity of this mysterious Grim Reaper. It wasn't that they didn't have the intention to kill this person, but rather that they didn't have the guts to. Their fear was so great that they even chose to ally and stay together for fear that this Grim Reaper would strike them. On Nine Dragons Island The first thing Tang Xiao did when he returned to Nine Dragons Island was to issue an order. The four major army corps were to be dispatched collectively and each army would infiltrate some regions, respectively the four regions occupied by four targets, the Pyramid, League of Arch Crusaders, Stygian Club, and House Dolan. Half a month later, Las Vegas in the United States was the biggest city in Nevada, internationally famous for its reputation as a gambling city. Here, the gambling industry was the core in tourism, shopping, and vacation that comprised an integral whole of the famous city. All of which earned the city the fanciful moniker of the world's entertainment city, as well as the wedding capital of the world. Santa Imperador Casino Touted as the largest and most luxurious casino in Las Vegas, the casino was patronized by more than tens of thousands of guests from all over the world every day. Some people got rich overnight and others ended up penniless. In the VIP room on the third floor, thick beads of sweat appeared on Du Chengfeng's forehead. His complexion paled as he looked at the less than 20 years old youth in front of him with incredulity. On both sides of the gambling stakes, a white man and a big black man looked at the smiling, boyish-looking youth with horrified eyes. You guys know that those who owe money must pay interest. Each of you owes $4.8 billion. Leave your fucking life here if you got no money to pay it. Tang Along took out a cigarette and lit it, taking a deep puff and stating with a smile. You must be cheating, punk. The burly black man abruptly got up, yelling and glaring furiously at Tang Along. The white man followed suit and angrily shouted, That's right. You gotta be fucking cheating. Else it's impossible for you to have those cards. Oriental punk, do you know how grave the consequences are for cheating in front of me, Asta? Tang Along looked disappointed and shook his head. You both don't wanna pay given your attitude, huh? If I recall correctly, those who don't pay their debts here will be taken care of by the boss of this place even if I don't kill you. What say you? Do you really refuse to pay for your lives and choose to die here? The white man turned to look at a certain middle-aged man and shouted sternly, Manager Philip, I want a guarantee from your casino. This punk must be cheating. I want him to be punished. Near the gambling table, an old-fashioned middle-aged man wearing gold-rimmed glasses slowly shook his head and said, he didn't cheat. We have 16 surveillance cameras in this VIP room, along with 16 casino staff. Even the dealer himself didn't find him cheating. All in all, you both have lost today, so you will have to pay, though $4.8 billion is not a small sum. Did you guys hear? Tang Along laughed and said, those who gamble must be ready to lose. You lost, so you gotta pay. You know, I'm one who likes to socialize. I also love money and never like to kill. You can leave after each of you pays me $4.8 billion. Else, not only will you die, but even your buddies and families will also bite the dust. Despair filled Du Chengfeng's eyes. He took his handkerchief, wiped off the sweat on his face and bitterly said, Little bro, you know the saying not to invite calamity to your family, yes? Today, Du Chengfeng admits that I don't have much money. I can only come up with $300 million at most. If you must kill someone, just kill me, but leave my family out of this. Kill him. You're dead. 
The burly white man and the black man pulled out the pistols from their waists at the same time. The eight bodyguards they brought also followed suit and aimed their guns at Tang Along, ready to shoot. Bang, bang, bang. A series of gunfire sounded, and the white man and black man suddenly fell into a pool of their own blood at the same time. Their eight bodyguards were all also ruthlessly murdered by the ten security guards of the casino. Du Chengfeng's two bodyguards also pulled out their pistols, but they didn't pull the trigger and just stood on both sides of Du Chengfeng, looking vigilant and ready to face any attack. Little brother. Du Chengfeng's lips squirmed a few times before he finally shouted in Chinese. He felt that using the language could be the last straw that could save his life because he suspected that Tang Along was a Chinese national. This was also his last gamble. He might be able to save his poor life if he bet a correct one, but if he was wrong, he knew that he would really bite the dust here today.